Hey guys, my name is Zach. And I'm Dean. Welcome to this week's episode of Collecting Weekly. This is the weekly podcast where we talk about the things that matter the most to us in collecting. Thanksgiving week, we're here on a Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know, the president already took off for the weekend. We are... We are here. Yeah, we're working hard for you, people. For you 19 subscribers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're going to start off uh, with our big segment from last week, which was the Dragon Stars line. Yeah. Uh, I think, was it Robo that broke the news uh, about the... Yeah, uh, and the Foosh. The Foosh. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So I really so, like his channel. Oh, it's incredible. Uh, so there was some new announcements that were made in the Dragon Stars line, some new figures that are going to be coming up. Which we totally called last which week. Which we totally called last week. Massive high five on that one. Uh, so what do we got? Yeah, so it's um, first form Frieza, but the ones that I called was... The androids? The androids, 17 and 18. Which is huge. We have... Uh, uh, Boo, Kid Boo. Perfect Cell. Cell, Perfect Cell. Which is awesome if you don't want to spend $130 yeah. on, um, on the figures. Figure Arts, the premium recolor. Uh, right. Well, there's three versions now. I think the there's original, a manga... The the original one, the premium color, which is, in my opinion, the best, and then the new STCC exclusive version. Instead of purple, he's blue. Isn't yeah. that the manga version? I don't know. It doesn't yeah, but they're all really pricey because it's a really nice Yeah, figure. and they're all exclusive. So, uh, Piccolo, Fighting Gear, um, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, uh, your favorite, uh, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. Uh, Super Saiyan 3 Goku. And, and the one that I called the Super Saiyan 4 yeah, Goku. Yeah, totally called Which is kind of weird because they didn't, uh, at least from this announcement, there wasn't a Vegeta. Well, not only that, but they're not canon. Well, then again, I guess that's true because Figure Arts did Broly and Broly's not canon. Uh, you know, well, and now he's canon, but it's a different Broly. Right. Um, but man, what a, what, a, then, what a lineup. And then I called... <clears throat> Saiyan Man, because I was like, oh, this would be a perfect line to get the Saiyan Man. And then Figure Arts. Figure Arts announced it. Yeah. I was like, oh my god. It's expensive though. It's like 70 bucks. Yeah, but I, it's like one of those figures like worth it. But I don't, I guess he's technically canon. Saiyan Man is canon. Yeah, he was, was in the Foo Saga. GT, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, really, really great lineup. Like I said, if you see uh, the Gotenks, let me know, because like, oh, for, for me, sure. that's like... Yeah, the Android that's one of my easy colors. pickups. Yeah, no, I'll look out for you. And, and um, it was funny, because today, one of our local comic stores, Gravity Damage, uh, they had posted that they got oh, some new Dragon so Star excited. stuff. And you were you called me right away, because I work, you know, five minutes from them, and you were like, hey, swing by. And uh, I called the store to put them on hold, and I was going to grab my lunch break. It was the uh, Ultra Instinct Goku wave, which was Goku, uh, Super Ultimate S- Gohan, yeah. Super Saiyan, and then uh, there was a third figure escaping know. me here. Um, and we, you know, I was really excited. I was like, oh my god, like, this is exactly the ones that you wanted. And, uh, you know, I called them, and they were like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. We put the wrong wave image up on the page, and uh, they actually got the, the Gold Frieza, the Kaoken Goku Ultimate Gohan wave, which I considered the, going there just for the Gohan, but at that point I was like... the uh, yeah, yeah, so it's King Kai Fist when he's Super Saiyan God Blue and Kaioken. Yeah. It's called the King Kai Fist. And then and then the Gold Frieza might be an easy pickup too, because... I always find that one. Because um, the figure arts, his price is so... Uh, like it fluctuates so much sometimes he's really cheap sometimes he's really expensive and uh-huh. I can never find that sweet spot where I have the money for it not only that but I've had that figure uh, and I kind of like this I know he's like a small character but I kind of like the small. size of the Dragon Stars a little well better. see that's why I wanted to get a regular final form Frieza because nobody makes a final form Frieza which if you remember when he's fighting Goku and Goku like, becomes Hulk. Super Saiyan, yeah, he gets like he gets gigantic. Yeah, and nobody makes that figure, and I was like, oh, maybe the size difference of the Dragon Stars can My, make up for yeah. it. Yeah, because I have the Detong Frieza, mm-hmm. and it's a great figure, and honestly, you can't tell that it's a knockoff. Uh-huh. Um, but I just don't like how small it is because yeah. I want that like. Yeah, and the third figure of that wave was the black hair uh, Vegeta and the gray. Uh, oh the yeah, 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 yeah. Although I was looking at the scale and the there yeah, was he's Vegeta's too tall. way off. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we almost got you that Ultra Instinct that we were talking about last I week. Know. I was actually really excited to get it for you, and then uh, you know it didn't happen. Yeah, because I was thinking about doing the um, 
the third party heads that we were talking about last week because mm-hmm. they have Ultra Instinct Goku. Yeah. And I'm like, because Ultra Instinct has like two forms. There's like where his he's like his hair is mostly black, mm-hmm. and then when he absolutely like loses his shit, he goes all silver. Yeah. And it comes with both of those head sculpts, and it's like uh, like thirty bucks. Mm-hmm. And so I'm thinking about picking that up, but then it's like, but then I have to take a body of another figure arts yeah. Goku that I already have, mm-hmm. so I could I I'd rather just get that one. Yeah. And that way he has this place on the shelf, and I don't have to like bastardize another figure mm-hmm. um but i also did get i got on <clears throat> ebay i'm just waiting for him to ship the saiyan race on earth Goku. oh nice that's a nice figure yeah it was like 35 bucks yeah i uh, used which is i'm okay. gonna open yeah. it anyway so um i'm super excited to get that one mm-hmm. and then i finally picked up napa because last week i was like dude i really really want a napa because I have the, the Vegeta from the Saiyan Saga. Which is a figure I really need to get. I know, I keep dragging my feet Dude, out. they're both so well done. Uh-huh. Uh, the only thing I don't like about the Vegeta is his scouter isn't attached to his head. It's, it's in his separate. ear, right? Yeah, but it's like it pegs in with like the world's smallest peg. And so it like falls out constantly. Yeah. But with the Nappa, it's a part of the head sculpt. And then his other heads don't have it. Yeah. Because it's like when he's fighting his own. Yeah. Right yeah. Um, but damn, dude, that Nappa figure is awesome. I was I meant to bring it tonight and I completely forgot. Yeah. Just so you could check it out. But like two the two of them side by side, it's like the perfect pair. It's and so then you awesome. have the sand pod that you got for me, right? Right. Oh, that thing's so cool. I need an actual I need what I need is like three more detoffs. Yeah, to display your video art. Yeah, because right now they're all in like a shelf and like you can only see like <coughs> Half of them, because the rest are behind them. Yeah. Um, I actually saw the Majin Buu, the, you know, the fat Majin Buu. Oh, yeah. The gravity the damage. I went there yesterday. Figure. Dude, I was shocked. That box, like, because the price was like, what, like 80 bucks, 79 bucks, something yeah. like that. And uh, I pre-ordered it, and then I canceled it, you know, and I canceled all my pre-orders, but... Seeing it in person, I was like, man, this is like a lot of plastic. That's like, you kind of getting your money's worth. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even... I. I just didn't think that he would be that big. Uh-huh. And when I saw him at the Comic-Con, I was like, holy shit. That's an awesome figure. And I'm not a big Boo fan, but if I found him at a decent price, I'd, I'd pick him up. Definitely, definitely. Uh, NECA also had some pretty big announcements. Or, excuse me, McFarlane. McFarlane. Oh, McFarlane, yeah. yeah they so the Game of Thrones line. Yeah, I, which I completely forgot they picked up. Yeah. And they put out some promo shots of Daenerys in her season... What was the last season? Six? Yeah, I think so. The so season six the off black of, outfit. Yeah, where she like meets Jon Snow for the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the Night King. Yeah. Those are the only two I've seen, and they... They look really... Like, I thought you were showing me three zero figures. Like, yeah. when you showed them, I was like, oh, shit, hell yeah, three zero got the black suit. But, uh, you know, it's going to be pretty cool. Because like, you can get those at Walgreens. The yeah, figures. and uh, another thing that uh, Robo was saying was because they... Um, McFarlane did the, the Fortnite figures. Uh huh. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah. Which are like crazy articulated. Mm-hmm. So, he was like, "It's kind of disappointing now because we know that McFarlane can do it. The articulation. The articulation. They're just not doing it. Yeah. But it's like, well, I mean, that's also like a kids' toy line, you know. That's it's aimed at a much younger audience. Uh-huh. I'm not gonna fucking have Daenerys, fucking doing backflips on my display shelf. You know what I mean? Yeah, not only that, but the uh, those characters, like the dances and the, the poses, and like, right. like you wouldn't be able to really make, you know, with Daenerys, and at least at this point, the Night King, they kind of just stand there. Yeah. You know? Which, you know, it's perfect for me. And I, like, all his figures, like, even the Destiny ones, I don't have a problem with the limited articulation, because they just stand there and look cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is something to point out that... Yeah. They are capable of doing articulation, which for, for McFarlane time. has literally never done. Yeah. And they're just choosing to only do it for that one uh, brand mm-hmm. or that one, the one uh, IP. Yeah. So, um, so uh, just, just going, to note. going back to uh, the figure arts real quick, did you know that they had the Hercule and the Kid uh, Krillin? Order? I know Kid Krillin, which I, is... This is news to me. I'm looking up right now. I didn't know they had Hercule. Yeah, that is... 
Oh my god, Hercule's the best. What? Oh my god, that my... character. You don't like Hercule? No, I've always hated him. Um, Mr. Yeah, that's. Satan. Oh man, it just I love that that first Boo arc where uh, Hercule befriends Boo and the dog and everything. Like to me, that you know, he's like buttering him up and everything. Like, oh man, I love that so much. Um, you know, updating from last week, uh, additionally, uh, my Deadpool is, uh, it was here and I got it. And, oh, yeah, uh, we both have figures about to arrive. Yeah, and so, um, you know, when I got it, it was in pretty good shape. One of the knees had a little bit of peeling uh-huh. from the pad, but also from the suit. Yeah. And uh, the rest of the suit, you know, I could, I could tell some areas where it might start to peel, you know, areas where you'd, you'd expect. Mm-hmm. And uh, toy anxiety, like I said, I picked up the body and uh, it was a fairly cumbersome procedure to switch things over. But now it's, you know, it looks really great. Yeah, you saw it when you... It looks when you, awesome. Yeah, you the saw it. The first thing I said was, like, when are you going to sell it to me? Yeah. Uh, and then I also picked up the Burning Soul head sculpt, uh, which when I got it, I was really happy with it. And I showed it to you and the rest of our group chat. And uh, everyone was like, this looks like shit. And the reason why is that sculpt was really dark. Like, the skin tone. Yeah, it, it looks... almost looked like, like, you guys said, like, it was, like, blackface almost. And I totally yeah, agree. Yeah, it looked weird. And so, uh, if you've seen the latest upload, which is my tutorial on how I repainted it, it was just three colors. It was a sand primer, a, uh, a red uh, translucent paint, and then a wash. And I think, you know, in the video I compare it, you know, to the behind-the-scenes makeup, you know, shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and, a candid uh, shot. Yeah, and they look pretty close. Like, I'm yeah, really, you sent me a side by side shot, and I was like, oh, damn. Yeah, so I'm really happy with that. Um, really happy with the figure. Now that the uh, Pikachu movie has been announced, uh, it's funny, the Amiibo Pikachu is exactly one six scale. That's hilarious. And so, like, now I'm going to just start posing. You know, I ordered it, it's going to come in, and uh, it was funny on eBay when I went to order it. I, I was scrolling, and and uh, I saw this guy that had one, and he was bidding. Was like bidding at like ninety nine cents. And uh, since no one had bid yet, he had the make an offer button. And so I offered him ten dollars, and it was five dollars shipping, so it was fifteen dollars. And right after that, I was like, shit, let me check the other ones that are on eBay to see if like I just offered this guy way too much. And sure enough, there was people selling it for like twelve dollars ship, ten dollars ship, you know, eleven dollars shipped, uh, varying conditions, new in box, you know, whatever. This guy's was used and loose. I was like, fuck, I just offered this guy, like, more than people were asking for a sealed version. Uh And fortunately, that guy declined the offer. I don't know why. Um, But I was, like, stoked because then I got one that was, like, $11 and it was loose. Right. Uh, Four bucks, you know. He was probably like, oh, I'm going to be a good guy and not make him spend that kind of money. Let him, like, reevaluate the offer. And then you just bought somebody (laughs) else's thing. (laughs) No, he declined it. He didn't even give me a, you know, you get, there's a chance to make another Dude, offer. Dude, somebody did that to me the other day. I offered them money. Uh-huh. They counter-offered with more than they were asking. Uh-huh. Twice. Uh-huh. Like, oh, you don't like my price? Pay more. And I was like, why did you have the, the offer button on there to begin with? hmm And then, like... I, I declined it at the second time. I was like, fine, you obviously don't want business. Yeah. And then they lowered the price to what I was asking for. Mm-hmm. And it's still up there. And out of principle, I'm not buying it. But I want it. Yeah. Good for you, man. You got to stick it to them sometimes. Um, yeah, but it, it turned out really well. Um, I've, you know, I, I sent you guys the pictures of the different posing I was doing with Deadpool with all the different accessories yeah, and Star hilarious. Wars. Yeah, uh, hilarious. Really excited how that turned out. Uh, my ODST is done. The backpack came in, painted it, put the magnet on it. Uh, I need to pick up one or two more magnets just to make the, the attachment a little firmer. Uh, and then also just glue the backpack shut because it's a, it's a sideshow Zartan backpack that, that opens, designed to open, uh, in three areas and it keeps falling open. It's super annoying. Uh, but it looks really good. You know, it's not the perfect, uh, game model, but you know, for what it is, I'm not, you know, tripping about it. Uh, and uh, I know last week we cut the podcast a few minutes short, uh, but there was a topic that we had on our list last week that we didn't get to, but statue collecting. I know that's a new thing that you're really getting into. I know, it's not a new thing for yeah, you, but it's... Is, no, it's definitely a new thing for me, because um, I don't like statues. Uh-huh. Um, but there's just some that have caught my eye that I'm like, damn, I want to own that. Yeah. And so far I only have two. Which are? Um... Kasumi from Dead or Alive, Dead or Alive, which is like 
original Bay. Uh-huh. Like, I've had a crush on Kasumi since I can remember, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, and so I, I just happened to go to a toy show that we had here in town um, for the stash bin at the Cooter Brands. Uh-huh. And some guy had one, and he had it for 75 and I was like... I want that, but I don't want to spend 75 So I look on eBay, and they're around like 40 mm-hmm. 50 And um, I was like, oh, I don't want to offer them that kind of money. Because the show just started. Yeah. And next thing I know, I had to leave the show. So maybe a couple hours later, um, our buddy Zach, shout out, shout out Zach. He was still there. And I was like, hey, ask him if he'll take 40 Uh-huh. And... Um, I sent Zach a picture of what it looked like, and he grabbed it for me. And the guy accepted the offer right then and there. Um, Because that guy had told me, like, I don't want to leave here with anything. Yeah, and and really it shows, like, towards the end is when you can really get some Right, and so I figured, like, well, he'd probably accept the offer, but not right at the get-go. But I'm thinking he probably would have just taken it. Uh Um, But, uh, so I got that one, and then I got the itch. I was like, oh, I want another Kasumi statue. Because when I was looking on eBay for that particular one, there's like a dozen different versions. Yeah. And so I found one that I really liked, and I bought that one. And it was like $30 shipped from Japan. Uh Uh-huh. And then the last one I really want is around like 40 to 60 uh, 50 on Amazon, so I might just buy it on Amazon just because. Mm-hmm. Uh, Saver shipping if something's wrong with it. Yeah. Um, but then I'm also getting into Dragon Ball Z statues. Yeah, because I've seen a lot of those at GameStop, like the cell shaded. Uh, yeah, they're not like the character, but the animated. Yeah. Paint, and they look awesome. Because those statues aren't really that great. Uh huh. Um, but when they're painted to look like they're out of the cartoon, I was like, that's fucking cool. Uh-huh. And I I just want Vegeta and Goku. And I found a few for sale since, and they're like, you know, like 50 bucks, 40 bucks, so I'm just waiting to have the extra cash to, to buy them. Yeah. Um, do you think you're going to get into the, like, higher-end stuff, like quarter scale, no. Boba Fett, and, like, Vader, or stuff like that? No. If I was going to do quarter scale, I'd just do the quarter scale Hot Toys Boba Fett. Yeah. Uh, but I don't like statues. I just don't. Yeah, and that's why it was kind of surprising when you were telling me that you were starting to order these. I was like... It just I like was kind of surprised. It's just like one character, and they don't... Uh, Max Factory, which is uh, Figma? Yes. They made a Kasumi. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's has articulated boobs, which is hilarious. That's odd. Yeah, really what it is... Are they on a ball joint? Or? Well, what it is is they come forward so she could bend over further for, like, a certain pose that she does. Uh-huh. Um, but it's just, like, something they, like... Like, oh, they're articulated. It's, like, a selling point, which is funny. It's kind of odd. But for how small that figure is, it's, like, $80. And I was like, I don't really want to spend that kind of money. Uh-huh. I mean, I totally would, but I haven't found it. So, it's yeah, not, not a big deal, but... um. I was like, oh, it'd be cool to have, like, a Kasumi shelf. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's it. I was just working on a Kasumi shelf. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've uh, really gotten any statues. I want to avoid it. I feel like if I start getting into it, then I'm going to really get into it. Um, but uh, I, I look forward to seeing your statue collection grow if it does. Uh, Hot Toys has teased some new stuff, uh, sort of. Well, actually, they put them up for pre-order. Uh, a little bit out of a left field for me, but they uh, announced the uh, the Fantastic Beasts, the sequel figures. So they yeah. have Grindelwald and Newt. I and, haven't uh, seen them. I'll be honest, uh, the Johnny Depp sculpt, I mean, they've nailed Johnny Depp many times. Ew. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, the sculpt, at least. And, uh, you know, they do a great job. It's Johnny Depp. Like, they've, they've got that sculpt down. Uh, the Eddie Redmayne, I really think that they dropped the ball on it. It looks oh, no. almost nothing like this uh, this actor. Um, he's very specific looking. Yeah, he's not a figure that you could like accidentally nail the sculpt. He's kind of like a. I almost think his his features are similar to like Han Solo, where a bunch of people are going to keep trying to get it and no one's going to get it right. Uh, between the two one six scale uh, figures that we have, I think that the. Uh, the first one, which uh, I believe is three zero, 
Um, I think they really nailed the sculpt. Um, I, I don't think that uh, the outfit is as good, you know, with the uh, the first release from 3-0 versus the Hot Toys. Uh -huh. um, you know, Hot Toys, just the way that they are, you know. Um, there's no way that that I think any company is going to beat that tailoring. Uh, but I really think that uh, Hot Toys uh, kind of missed on the sculpt. And it's a prototype, granted. Uh, but oh, that's true. There's room for... It's a prototype, but it's like a prototype that, that I, they've already shown the pre-order for. What's the character called? Oh, I'm sorry. This was Star Ace, not 3-0. Uh, oh. Newt Scamander. Um, yeah, if you want to pull it up right here and you can check it out. Yeah, because I, I don't know... Uh... Yeah, so um, it's it's nice to see, you know. So this is the Eddie Redmayne from uh, Star Ace right there. Okay. Yeah, and uh, not the best. No, I mean it's pretty good. I mean that's the that's the three zero one. Um, oh no! You found it. Yeah. Yeah, the Hot Toys one. He looks sad. Well, I don't think that they're both great, but I think that one's better than the other. And I think that the uh, Star Ace is a little better. We're just saying a lot. The only thing is that Star Ace is um, they price their figures like like Hot Toys prices, like two forty, two fifty. Oh shit! And you know, not only that, but I think they have the six scale Newt coming out for this movie, so it's like kind of weird. Um, but it's just nice That's to see. That's weird. Some some angles it looks just like him, and then others it's like the Hot Toys. Yeah, and then on the others. Like, yeah, I think. Sweet. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, but it's just nice to see. Like I think lately it's been all Marvel and Star How many Wars. How alphas and do you get? Well, that's the Star Wars. Right oh, there. okay. Yeah. Um, at any rate, though, but it, it but it is nice. Like I know we kind of get bogged down with like. You know, oh, it's another. Oh superhero. yeah! Oh my goodness! Yeah, uh, this is the hot source one. Looks nothing like him. Exactly. The yeah. Star yeah you were looking at the other. Okay. Yeah. You Holy you got you got it backwards. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just nice to see a company like Hot Toys that's gonna kind of step outside the box. Like, I really love that they did the Christopher Robin Winnie the Pooh and Piglet set. Uh, I really love that they did the Bell oh, wow. standalone figure. Yeah, that Johnny Depp looks awesome, that right? That looks awesome. Yeah, um, I haven't seen the movie. I've seen the first one, but I haven't had a chance to check out that the second one. That outfit is insane. I know. Um, but you have made a purchase that really uh, tickled my fancy. Did you want to tell me about it? The uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I, moving forward. I didn't buy it from out from under you, but... I, I have been asking the guy, like, oh, I like, saw I'm you in New York. commenting on the post, and then I was like... I really want one of these. And I was like, I'll give Zach some time because you were like, I'm thinking about it. Well, the thing is, I have... Um, Three? Well, go, go ahead and tell him what it is. It's the one six Kyoto Vader sculpt. Yeah. The hell so I have... Um, I think I have three. I might have four of them. I don't know. Jesus. Um, yeah, I found some really good deals on the model kit and so I was starting to pick them up, you know, just to... Because they are really nice sculpts, and, and their uh, Kyoto Vader was a model kit that came on the 90s. Yeah, it's so getting harder to find. Exactly. Like, they're not that hard to find now. You know, it's a mass-produced model kit, but at some point... They'll dry out. They'll dry out. And uh, the masks, like I said, I've owned three of them, and the quality varies. Uh, some of them will look really crisp, and because they're vinyl cast from a company that was doing it 20-odd years ago... Sometimes there are imperfections that, that really make it difficult to get a good, you know, because the, the sculpt is from Empire Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the imperfections really um, make it difficult to get a nice, crisp, smooth finish. Uh, fortunately, the three that I've gotten were all fairly good. Some of them needed some minor paint filling, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, you know, polymer filling. Uh -huh. um, I don't think you've seen your sculpt yet in person, but the no. pictures I saw it looked really good. It was, a, it was a tempting price, I think. I think he was asking fifteen plus five shipping or something like that. Fourteen, 14 plus, five. plus five shipping is nineteen dollars, which is a steal. Um, and uh, I think you were saying you wanted my help painting it. Yeah, so I was like, Zach seems like he's interested. I'm gonna give him some time, and if he doesn't buy it, like if it's still available on this day, I'm gonna go ahead and buy it and like be like, hey, look what I got, and he'd be like, oh, let me help you paint it. Because you have the... And that's exactly you what you the, did. You have the titanium dome, right? Yeah, I have the dome already. So it's funny that you bought that. I, I was... I, I don't need another one. Um, I was actually interested in buying it t for you because you had been uh, using your... Uh, 
the air freshener the head air for a while. And, and Which, that's not a bad sculpt, but the Kyoto is like just next level. Well, I don't hate the, the air freshener sculpt, except, and you know me the way I am with my figures. Uh-huh. Even though it looks good from the front, I know that it's not that great all around. Yeah. And that sculpt, if you remember, you like shaved off the Yeah, you, top. Ha you have to shave off the There's entire like back portion of it because uh, it's designed, so it's called the Air Fresh Innovator. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw it as an Air Fresh, yeah. but it's designed to plug into your vents. Right. And uh, it's a good sculpt. It's not the best sculpt, but it's, it's, it's a mirrored Vader sculpt, which doesn't yeah. happen in the original trilogy. Um, but the Kyoto is going to be a massive upgrade for you in, in terms of both scale and accuracy. Well, I was going to say in the, the air freshener sculpt, there's like holes in it. I had to fill it with mostly the sticky tack. Yeah, we, we filled it with a bunch of shit. To with a of... bunch of stuff. And that way I could put in the, the yellow stuff so I could have a... Yeah, a good... the silicone mold. Yeah, and then on top, the dome doesn't actually sit on the... It just rests. It, well, I have a bunch of sticky tag on top, too. Yeah. So if you hold that sculpt with the titanium dome, it's ex extraordinarily heavy just because of all the shit that's yeah. keeping it together. So I've just been pretty disappointed with it. And then uh, when I saw this pop up, I was like, well, Zach's always look really good. And I know he's always down to work on Vader. Uh -huh. And, you know, it'd be cool to have one for myself. And so I was like, hey, 19 bucks. You can't beat it. I already have the dome. So when I got my first Kyoto model kit, I paid 70 bucks for the kit. And that was, um, you know, when I got it, I was I was okay with the idea that I was paying 70 bucks just for the head. I yeah, ended up but, using the other parts, but... Oh, I was going to say, use the shin guards. The, and the, the uh, chest and then the belt boxes. And some hands. Uh, the hands weren't that great, but you know, there's a lot of parts there. Uh, when I got the second kit, I think I paid 30 bucks shipped... Really nice lady that was selling it. I think she got it at a garage sale. And uh, the third one, I think I paid 20 bucks ship for, for the whole kit. Nice. And I don't know how that person shipped that box and made a profit off, you know, for 20 bucks shipped. Um, but it was one of those things where I made them an offer. Uh, they, they had a bid. No one bid on it. They relisted it immediately, shot them an offer, and, uh, you know, went from there. Uh, I really like that scope. There is... Uh, a big problem in it in that it's it's asymmetry is mirrored so uh if you look at the prop they basically mirrored it and i think it was a licensing thing not that they couldn't make the vader um but i think you know they were probably given like a stunt casting or something like that where it had that imperfection um quickly once you have it in the, in the cabinet you'll forget about it because it's a really nice sculpt. Yeah. Uh, when we painters, are you going to want the flesh tone paint on the back too? Yeah, probably just because... Okay, yeah, just so it's all there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, and, and honestly, you know, uh, my first Kyoto Vader, I removed that... Um, the flesh back there and I put in the KO Sideshow Deluxe head back there. Oh, that's right. Um, but honestly, like, when you do that, it's hard to get a good fit and not only is it hard to get a good fit, but it's hard to cut that out cleanly because it's vinyl, and it, it doesn't, you know, cut super well. Uh, not only that, but you're having to curve it around the shape of the helmet. Right. I honestly think it looks better as a whole, leaving, uh, leaving that flesh in there just stock. Yeah. And the sculpting isn't terrible, you know, that you really need to do it. Yeah. Um, but it, I'm really happy for you because that's a good... You know, I think the Kyoto helmet with the uh, titanium dome is the best combination presently, excluding the Hurricane Vader mask, which, um, you know, I don't even know that he's taking pre-orders pre for new masks, but I've been on his list with a confirmed Return of the Jedi order for almost a year and change now. Damn. And And he's having health problems, so and I haven't put any money down, so I'm not, you know, upset about that at all. Um, but this is a very tangible way for people to get a good Vader. I'm worried head. that my Vader is too big. Okay. Because um, I have the sideshow. Yeah, the sideshow deluxe. Well, body. he's gigantic. Yeah. And in the shelf, I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, this thing is massive. So the only thing so is... So just weird it's not scale. I think the head might look a little small in that body because, yeah. you know, it is so, so big. Um... But you could always swap the body. Yeah. I'm also always down to get a new Vader. I still want a new whole Vader. 
Oh, okay. Um, or the Tarkin 2-pack, which I also might get. To me, that's the best out-of-the-box Vader that you can get. Um, the only thing is that I use the Kyoto helmet on a New Hope Vader, but it's, the vent isn't accurate. Uh, the chin vent. Oh. It's too big. Um, but, you know, I was able to overlook it, and I'm a huge... You know, it just looks so good. Like Yeah, but that's the nice thing about Vader is there's so many different versions of him that yeah. you could kind of make your own ideal... Yeah, exactly. And I'll show you uh, in my office, I have an A New Hope painted uh, Kyoto mask. It looks really good, actually, with the red eyes and yeah, the yeah. matte finish. It looks, it looks pretty solid. Nice. Um, for my Vader, um, I actually just added the wired cape, which I've had for a while, uh, I know, to my Mythos sweet. Vader. And, oh, my God, with the Tony May head, with the reveal mask, the uh, Hot Toys mask and Hot Toys dome. The fucker looks dope. Now, is that, how's that dome secured on the head? The dome secured on the mask? Yeah. I just use blue tack. Okay. It, it does have a magnet, but it sucks. Uh, oh. Eric was telling us that's one of the reasons why he returned his uh, well, ESP Vader. I think there's a lot of reasons he returned it. I think Gale got it first, and he got spoiled. Mm-hmm. Um, Fucking Gale. Gale got my Vader, man. Gale, um, dumb slut. Speaking of hobbying that we want to do together, uh, I know we've been talking about this for a while. Hopefully, maybe with the holiday season coming up, we'll have some free time. But the Deckard Police Car Number Twenty Seven Model yes. Kit, I've had that for about a year now. I was gonna say you've had it like a year. Fucker was expensive. That was like an eighty dollars model kit, and uh, I think since you you're a big fan of Blade Runner and I'm a big fan of Blade Runner, I think it'd be a fun project for us to do like an evening. Uh, you know, get some wings or something, get some food, and then yeah, I know you don't drink, but like I'll have a beer. We'll do some modeling, and yeah. uh, at the end of it, we'll have a nice you know Deckard car. I have mean, probably more than one day thing, don't you think? No, I I do things really fast. Oh. I hate to, but yeah, I mean we could we could take as long as we need, you know, do X Y Z one day and then we could film it, put it on the channel. Yeah, we'd have to figure out how to do it, but yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that is uh, something that we're gonna do. Uh, we were in the garage looking at some stuff, and uh, I was like, oh shit, like I totally forgot that this <laughs> we had this model kit because we were we were. Sit on the couch and we're talking about movies that, you know, you, you and I were talking about movies that we wish, like, big companies picked up licenses for. And uh, I have the uh, the KO, de- uh, excuse me, Agent K, Officer K coming in. Yeah. And uh, that figure, I, I'm pretty sure I've paid it off from TNS already. Uh, they haven't sent me another invoice in a while. That. Really? Yeah. I- I'll pull it up right now, but... Uh, yeah, that figure is, is really nice, and they actually made the old Deckard to go along with it, with, like, the whiskey glasses and his blaster. Oh, nice. And, uh, it's really, really neat, because the blaster for Deckard, they, they did the, uh, translucent rip effect wow. in six scale, and, uh, that's incredibly impressive to me. Um, but, yeah, Blade Runner is just one of those movies, man. I, I know you were telling me, like, you call it, like, a perfect film, the 2049 version. Oh, it's so, it's literally um, the perfect... Like, I don't want to say you don't need to watch the first one, uh-huh. but it, like, standalone. It, yeah, it's not, like, the thing is, like, a lot of times these studios will do, uh, like, quote-unquote reboots or, like, sequels, like Ghostbusters, you know? Dog's good. And they fucking, like, ruin these movies. And this one was very respectful to the, the cough, universe of the first one. Episode 7 and 8, cough. Yeah. Cough ruined Johnson. Well, it was also, uh, wasn't the original director and writer? Yes. Yeah. Which, I was gonna say, like, Halloween, the new one. I've heard it was a good movie. I, I haven't heard otherwise. Yeah. And it's like, dude, if you give, if you let these people... That care about their franchises. ...continue their own franchises and their own IPs, you'll have much better pro- products. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Um, but yeah, so I, I know that there's, uh, you know, going on that topic, uh, for me, like, I think it would be pretty cool. Like, I saw the Creed movie, and I want to see the second one uh, this weekend. Oh, do the Creed but I would love um, to see, like, a six-scale Creed. Uh, not Apollo Creed, but Adonis Creed. Oh, that'd be cool. Um, the only thing is, like, with all these boxing figures, they all have these seamless arm bodies, and yeah. they always rip. Yeah. I, I think that's terrible. Um, for you, is there any, any movies that you'd like to see figures from? You yeah. know, and the only ones that really stick out in my head, and it's not even particularly a good movie, 
In fact, most people will probably say it's a bad movie, but I enjoyed it. I don't think it's, like, great by any stretch of the imagination, but it was fun. Um, Valerian? Okay. Have you seen it? No, I think Hot Toys said that they were going to make figures. Okay, they... Well, they te- I'm sorry, they, they teased. They put up the prototypes, and they looked amazing, mm-hmm. but the movie just didn't do great, and so they probably figured, like, no one's going to buy these, uh-huh. and they just didn't make them. Yeah, because they've... Like, like, that show, I think, was a show that they also showed the Commander Cody and a few other clones. I think it was the year before, but yeah. Oh, okay. Which, but yeah, those, they've also... Movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I've, I've come to learn, like, don't always think people are going to... Yeah, because people were starting to sell off they, their Cody's, yeah, and, and they like, haven't... They've actually taken it down from the Coming Soon page. Yeah. Uh, which uh, is hilarious. I don't... <sighs> I don't see them not making it, but in a timely fashion. Honestly, I, I so. see them not making it. Cody's uh, an important character, but I mean the thing is, like, he's the only movie clone that matters. Yeah, I mean he is, but I mean if you look at the characters from the prequel that they haven't even shown yet, that are like, you know, Cody's important. In Star Wars, but as far as like the movies go, because I know I know you and I were saying like, oh, it'd be great if they gave us a Captain Rax or an Ahsoka, uh, you know those characters they're just in the show, and most of Cody's stuff is just in the show. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like so, no, Co- that's what I'm saying. Cody's a one scene, two scene character. Right. And like we haven't gotten a Padme, we haven't gotten a prequel Emperor, uh, like you know what I mean? Like there's just like. Maybe 20 other characters I think we'd get before Cody. Yeah, except that, that Hot Toys likes making troopers. But they've already made them. They made the armor for the sideshow. Right. Uh, the yeah, body it was a collaboration. Armor. Yeah, so, I mean, I could definitely see it being a long time um, for that. Yeah. Now, speaking of people selling their figures, um, I know you're currently, you just sold it, but you were uh, selling your mole. And the Darth market on that one, uh, Sideshow V2 Mole, the market on that figure has really changed. Uh, when I when I sold mine right after it was announced, I was lucky to get 180 for it. And, you know, about a week before the Hot Toys uh, Mole was announced, people were selling those really high, like 230 you know, 250 Yeah, which is um, way above retail. And you sold yours for a pretty good deal with, a, with another figure. Yeah. Um, but... I mean, I was surprised you sold yours as fast as you did. Yeah. And you sold it in our local group, too. Yeah. I, it took, what, six hours? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just... I was looking at my collection... Because mm-hmm. you don't sell figures often. That's why I was yeah, I, bringing it up. I really don't. Um, I have... I don't even know how many I have now. I think last time I counted, I had 53 uh-huh. six-scale figures. Um, but... I don't have anything else from episode one. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if they came out with Qui Gon Jinn, I wouldn't buy it. I'm not a Qui Gon Jinn fan. Yeah. Uh, episode one, Obi Wan is arguably the worst in terms of design. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I wouldn't buy that. I'm just also not a huge Darth Maul fan. I keep shoehorning that bastard into everything. Everything. It's, so it's like to go away. Like it was cool when he died. And then he. It, died again, then he died again. And then he died again. Yeah, and then he's like, back in solo because the timeline's all fucked up. Yeah, it's like if he'd just like l- l- been dead, that would have been a much cooler character because it's like, damn, I wonder what he could have done yeah. had he been alive. Now, say what you will, I I think that Darth Maul should have been the bad guy for all three movies. Mm-hmm. That it was like Obi Wan's catching up to him. So. Yeah. Well, I think it would have made more sense because they brought him back twice and, you know, a lot of movies will do this where they have, like, a trilogy and, like, the bad guy will get defeated in one movie. You know, Star Wars, you wouldn't really, like, Darth Vader was defeated in the first movie and he came back in the second one, won uh, the duel, and then the third one was defeated. And right. that's kind of the formula of, of Star Wars with the sequel trilogy also. It's, like, Kylo Ren. And, uh, you know, I, I agree with you, like... 
you know, I guess obviously the Emperor is the overarching villain of, of the right. trilogy, but... To have this um, one... It just seems like in the prequel, it's like, oh, I have this guy, he's my apprentice, and then he loses. It's like, oh, this guy's my apprentice, then he loses, then he's, oh, this guy's my apprentice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just kind of like... Yeah, and it gets odd. even worse in, in Clone Wars. It's like, okay, then you have Asajj, and then... Yeah, Palpatine doesn't like Asajj, so Dooku gets to kill Savage and Brass, and then Dooku Yeah, it's and like... Grievous, and... And, you know, and I love those... Um, I love the prequels. I love the Clone Wars, and they, but they definitely have problems. But just going back to Darth Maul, like I'm just not a huge Darth Maul. Even if he had been like this, like super crazy villain, like I don't know, he just doesn't really do a whole. And I had got him in a trade because uh, I had a, an Amazing Spider-Man two that I had gotten, mm -hmm. and our buddy Albert was like, "Hey, I have this Darth Maul. You want to trade?" I'll give you some cash, too. And I was like, no, like, that Darth Maul just came out. Like, and at the time, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was going for quite a bit more. Uh -huh. But I'm also not trying to rip off my friends. I was like, I only paid, like, 170 for the Spider-Man. I was like, we'll just do, like, an even thing. He's like, okay. So we just did an even swap. Because I was really unhappy with that, that Spider-Man figure because he's yeah. not MCU. Yeah. And I was like, like, it's cool that I have a Spider-Man, but he just doesn't go with these other movie figures. Yeah. And so I traded him for the Darth Maul, but I I never would have bought a Darth Maul. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, well, at least he's Star Wars, and I, I could get rid of the Spider-Man. Um, but I just, like, I was like, I don't like this fucking, like... He's, he's in an awkward spot on my shelf that doesn't make sense. I just have, like, Anakin with two clones, two clones, three clones, two clones of Darth Maul. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So I was like, I'd just rather get rid of him and use that money to buy some new fig arts. Yeah. And uh, I was lucky to sell him in, in a day. Yeah. Or a half day. Which I'm glad to see the group is still working because for a while there was, like, people were getting hung up on selling figures. Um, yeah, I, I ran into the same problem. I, uh, was selling a, uh, a Jack Sparrow, and I was having trouble moving in the yeah. X-15, and I was offered the Darth Maul, and, and same thing, you know, this was before the, uh, I was like maybe like three weeks before it was announced, um, but I was kind of concerned because, um, you know, once I got him, I was like, man, like, at that time, like, episode one just was not even in my collection, like, at all. And even now it's not. And it just it was just like a shelf with the Emperor, uh, excuse me, Chancellor Palpatine, uh, and Grievous, and I kind of had to fit. That's exactly what my shelf there. looked like. It was Grievous, Palpatine, and then Darth Maul. And I was like, that looks stupid. Exactly. Because uh, they don't exist at the same time. Yeah. And I eventually got rid of all three of those figures. Yeah. Which, the Palpatine I've customized, it looks really good. I'm actually really proud of the way that, that figure turned out. Um, I'm surprised it's stuck, it stuck around so long. Dude, I'm so excited because for that shelf... So the way that my collection that I want it to be... I don't know if you've noticed it or not. It's but gay. It's 2018, so <laughs> you can't say that. Yeah, no, I, that's so, not a good thing. So... <laughs> proud. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the top shelf is Vader. So uh, there's Thrawn there, obviously, but... It's uh, Thrawn, Vader, from Anakin. Empire Strikes Back, then Anakin, then another Vader. That's kind of like my Vader shelf. Uh, the third shelf, uh, which is second from the top, is uh, Jedi Luke, which uh, I just changed out the DX07 head for the Hot Toys uh, Return of the Jedi here, which I really like. Uh, C3PO and R2D2, so my Return of the Jedi shelf. And then next we have my Empire Strikes Back shelf with Yoda, uh, Luke, and Boba Fett. So there's two Lukes on that shelf. Uh, to mirror the two Anakins and Vader's on the top shelf. The third shelf, I have Han and Chewie, and then I have Carbonite Han and Jabba, so that's my Han shelf, and then the last shelf is my Emperor shelf, so I'm going to have the Emperor, uh, excuse me, the Chancellor, a blue guard, which I customized, and then I'm going to have uh, Palpatine on the throne and a red guard. So that'd be my Palpatine shelf. So every shelf is like a character's story, like, you know, Anakin and Vader in one shelf, and Thrawn, because... Uh, Anakin worked with Thrawn both as Anakin and as Vader, and then Luke going from the uh, the noob that gets wrecked in ESB to you know the the Jedi Knight, and then Han going from the smuggler to the block of ice, and then you know Palpatine yeah. going from you know a handsome you know Chancellor to this 
triple hideous, hideous B. Yeah, so that's kind of like oh, nice. that's kind of like the flow of my shelf, and and for a while it didn't make sense until now that this uh, Palpatine, which is kind of the next thing we're talking about, like that's that figure is gonna complete the shelf plan that I had, you know. Yeah. And so that's kind of a big. And he chaos gets here thing. tomorrow. He should get here tomorrow. Um, I was gonna reroute it using my UPS. Uh, but they were telling me that if I did that, it wouldn't be there until Friday. Oh, that sucks. Because uh, it takes a business day to reroute it. Uh, so I talked to my wife about it, and I talked to my uh, company about it. I'm just going to take a day off tomorrow. One, because it's like Thanksgiving is uh, Thursday. And For we're, sure. we're hosting here. Um, but two, that way I can mess with it. Uh, I got the Throne version, so I ordered the Battery Eliminator, which I'm going to put a video up on my channel about how that works. Yeah. And uh, I am so excited Dude, to have that. That's cool. I'm so excited. I'm glad you got the throne version. Now, now you know, of course, at this point, I don't have the Royal Guard yet, so, mm. it, you know, I gotta figure out, like, how that's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, have rewards, but, you know, so the, the shelf won't be done by any means, but at least the, the main focus of that fourth and final shelf... Well, you're also gonna get the Red Guard soon, right? Hopefully, you know, yeah. I know uh, some of our friends are talking about gift-giving stuff, and one of our friends offered to pick that one up for me. Um, so hopefully, but, uh, we'll see. Uh, for you, I know, uh, your Fox, which is kind of like a new pickup that you got oh, coming yeah. in. Uh, and... Well, what I was going to say, my so newest you, pickup was Anakin. Yeah, exactly. So you got the Hot Toys Anakin to replace your Metacom Anakin. Which... What do you think? Holy shit. It's a nice figure, Now right? that I actually own it, and I, like, have it in my hands... It's hard to argue it's not the best figure I own. Really? Wow, that's it's, really high praise. Dude, it's just so well done. The hair, the face sculpt, the clothing, the material. And you, and you got the, uh, the, the lights on. Yeah, okay, I just okay. got regular. I, okay. I figured they had more posing options. Uh, yeah. Because even when he fights Obi-Wan, he doesn't really have Sith eyes. Yeah, most of it's, the fight... It's, it's not until that he's, like, burning that he really gets them. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I could still kind of, like... Even if I wanted to pose him fighting, I could. Um, also, you're not going to fucking get up, up on the glass, like, ooh, let me see his eyes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but I was like, oh, I could pose him with R2, I have Obi-Wan coming. C-3PO, so, the clones that yeah, you have. Yeah, yeah, so I was like, uh, I think light side... You can even pose him with... Uh, Grievous, you know, because in the Clone Wars there's a lot of interaction. Right. Well, I don't um, have Grievous anymore. Oh, yeah, you don't. Okay, just kidding. You son of a bitch. Uh, ignorant <laughs> slut. Um, but yeah, you're right. With your collection, Anakin goes almost anywhere. Nicely with a lot of figures. I could even put him next to Vader. If you're looking for a Padme, hit me up. Yeah. Like Anakin and Padme show. Um, and I had that Padme too when I sold her, but. Um, Not like this, no. The. <laughs> the. Um, yeah, it's just... You can get some kinetic sand and put it with Anakin. Yeah. <laughs> All kinds of things. No, I, but yeah, I chose to get the light side. One, it was cheaper, and I didn't feel like... Um, I mean, because you, with your collection, I don't think you would have gotten the benefit of the base. Yeah. It's a huge base, and I don't even think he fits that well on that base in a detoff. I actually don't think he fits at all, honestly. Because yeah, people I know have him. Okay, yeah, because people don't have him, they don't display him on that thing. Yeah, and I just wouldn't use it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, also, I, I've had the pleasure of seeing an Anakin Sith in person, and the eyes just don't pop like they do. In the pictures. Well, not only in the pictures, but the first batch. Oh, really? You think there's a difference? Yeah, I think the ones that were con exclusives that were there at the convention uh -huh. were like hand painted and brought there specifically for to be an exclusive mm -hmm. and they're like oh fuck a lot of people want this just released it and then they mass produced it well it's my understanding um, from people that that know like the ins and outs uh -huh. uh, budget Stark yeah. he was saying that all Hot Toys eyes are not hand painted only the um, I think what he had said was and don't quote me on this, but that the only eyes that are actually hand painted are the you know like when the artist will show the the sculpt in their hand, uh -huh. those are hand painted. But the the production ones they use a series of uh, digital printing. You know like the Hasbro eyes like are done yeah. with the black series, 
and like how their faces are printed, they do that, but like several different layers, at layers to achieve the effect. Uh. So, I wouldn't say that maybe the first batch were all hand painted, but maybe there was just a change in the production process, yeah. like the colors changed or the inks um, changed. Yeah, because if you see like a, a like a, an actual exclusive one next to one that just came out, uh huh, it it just it's almost um, it's just like lackluster. It's just like oh, I guess. He actually just kind of looks like he has, like, a disease. Pink eye. Jaundice. Yeah, jaundice, yeah. Um, <coughs> your Fox is coming in, too? Dude, shout out Echo Base Customs. I'm so excited, man. That's been a long road mm -hmm. that I've only been waiting. I don't, haven't actually done anything. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I bought a figure um, it's off a shocker, of Instagram. Yeah. Because at first, I wanted to do a Commander of Thorn. Yeah. Which would have worked with the shock trooper. And I was like, oh, you won't have to do much um, since he's already a shock trooper. I just bought all the extra bits and sent it to him. And then <clears throat> as we were talking, um, I was like, well, Eric, shout out Eric. He already got a thorn from you. And I just don't want to do the same figure that he did. Yeah. Also, Fox, you could pose with... Anakin and Vader, mm -hmm. whereas Thorn you can only pose with a Padme, yeah, which nobody owns. So I own it. Um, well, not the, not I'm that right Padme, but um, so I was like, dude, do you think Fox is possible? He's like, dude, fuck yeah, let's do it. He's like, it should take like two weeks. Eight um, months ago. Yeah, I don't know how long it's been. Probably what three months or four. I'd have to go back and look, but it's been a while. It's been a long time, but. Bless his heart. He had to do a lot of like paint stripping and repainting, and he lives in uh, Virginia. Is it? I don't know. I don't know where he lives. Like Alabama or something. I think. It's, yeah. Well, the weather doesn't allow for paint all that well. Yeah. Um. So he's had to restart a few times, and uh, he finally knocked it out, and I paid him, and he shipped it, and it said it's supposed to be here tomorrow. I doubt it's gonna be here tomorrow. Dude, you'd be surprised. The uh, USPS is, uh, their estimates are pretty good, even around this time of the year. Usually I would say, like, after Black Friday, maybe it'll change a little bit. But, like, right now I would say, you know, they might, you know, I think it's a good possibility you're going to get your stuff tomorrow. Uh, and if you do, we'll talk about it next week. Mm -hmm. um, now that, uh, you know, for me, now that I got the Deadpool, um, a good friend of mine, Greg uh, Arrington, just moved here from Japan, uh, he's selling his uh, Colossus from the Deadpool 1 movie, so oh, he won nice. Toys R Us. And, and uh, you have a Deadpool. And I have a Deadpool. And so uh, we're in talks to do that deal. I'm selling a figure to uh, my friend Zach Williams. Uh, and if that deal goes through, I'll have the money for Colossus. Uh, my friend Seth, uh, who's our co-admin of this group. Shout uh, out Seth. Uh, I had texted him today and I asked him... Um, if he was selling his Gladiator in the future to let me know his Russell Crowe uh, oh, uh, right. Roman General yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gladiator. And uh, he was telling me that he was actually really wanting to pick up the uh, the new one, which is the final battle with the uh, like the dark blue armor. When he's, when in, he's the in, the, in, the, in the arena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, where he dies. And, um, spoiler alert. <laughs> now we're going to have to put spoiler alert. This, this is like a 17 year old <laughs> movie. Like if you don't watch it yet. Yeah. Um, at any rate, uh, the Game of Thrones spoilers last right. week, and now with Gladiator spoilers this I don't week. I damn. But the uh, he was telling me he wanted to get the new version. I think it's by uh, I think it's by ACI. Um, but so we we were talking and and uh, you know I sold him the figure at a pretty good price, and he was like, "Yeah, I'll just sell it back to you for what you paid. You know what you paid, what I paid you for." Right, right, right. And uh, I'm really excited because I know he doesn't wear the. Um, the the general armor for that long in the movie it's just i think that first scene right um but to me like it's it iconic is, it's iconic like yeah it's just it's just a really well done uh figure and so um that was one that that we had first seen uh it's by big chief studios excuse me so bcs um that figure was one we had first seen when I was helping you set up the lights for your detolf, and we went to go uh, to the comic store. Oh, that's right, yeah. And we went and grabbed, like, this crazy-ass burger. I don't know where we got it from. That was a crazy-ass burger. And, uh, and I saw it on the shelf. I was like, holy shit, like, 
This is a grail figure Where for me. Where do we go? I don't know. We went to some restaurant. And, uh, at any rate, um, I, don't remember. I was literally shocked that it was there. And, and I, I called them and, uh, like a week later, I, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And, uh, you know, I went and I was going to, I was just planning to put it on layaway, but they gave me a really good deal to, um, to pick it up then and there. And, uh, I did. And, you know, it, it was in my collection for a little bit, but when my daughter was born, uh, I needed to sell it for some, some dinero and, uh, I'm glad to have it back potentially. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to have that back and, uh, you know, that would be like, you know, I got the emperor and then I'll be picking up the Colossus and then after that, the gladiator. So it's going to be a pretty, pretty good next few months for me. Nice. Um, it's about that time of the year where we start, excuse me, where we start considering our figure of the year candidates. Yeah. Um, and for me, like I collect different lines and I personally don't distinguish like if a toy is $10, $20, tw like for me, it's just like, what was the best figure I bought this year? You know what I mean? And I know yeah. when we were talking about it, you were like, well, you know, the Goku figure arts, the kid Goku is a really good figure, but like, I don't feel right putting it in the same category as like a hot toy. Right, 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 right. Um, so, f I mean, I guess for me, do you have any figures that really stood out to you as being really, really great figures? I mean, the Anakin uh -huh. uh, is an easy contender for the best. Uh huh. Um,. But, um, yeah, I got the Kid Goku mm -hmm. and the Bulma from Dragon Ball. So I guess I guess for the for the point of this, let, let's do a, a, a Hot Toys figure of the year and then, like, a less than a $100 figure of the year. Does that sound good? Yeah, that's fine. Just, I mean, we're in mid-November, so yeah, I think the things that have come out, you know. Um, I don't know if I've bought a new, I don't, I think all the figures I've owned this year are old. Except for Anakin, I think that's the only figure. I mean, you got the Mark Six. Oh, I did get the Mark Six. I forgot about that. Well, let's hear what you got. Um, oh, I well, think then the Major, coming. and then I mean, you've got a lot of stuff. Oh, this I, year. I, I, you got, I have. You buy figures like every week. I'm time. awesome. Okay, so I just learned. Okay, so so let's start with under one hundred dollar figure of the year. One figure. <sighs> Dude, Bulma from Dragon Ball. Wow. Figure okay. Arts. It's just so well done. It's just. It's amazing. It's so cool. And alongside Goku, and I'm going to get Roshi and the Kid Krillin. That's going to be an awesome shelf. Uh -huh. uh, I've been kind of like looking around for like um, vehicles. Because, you know, she's always like on a bike or a fucking like little glidey thing. Uh -huh. um, but it's just, uh, I was so blown away with that figure. Yeah, it looks nice because like... A lot of the articulation is really well hidden by her outfit. So well hidden, or even her knees. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, I was just like, even before I held one in my hand, I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. And then I found it at, at the Alamo City Comic Con, and I bought it, no questions asked. Uh, took it home, opened it, and I was like, yeah, this is a whole other level of amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so... Yeah, like, because Kid Goku is really cool, and he's got a bunch of shit in the box. Yeah. A lot of accessories, and he's really cool, and also, like, just <clears throat> iconic, and I love Goku. Uh-huh. Um, but, yeah, that, I think just in terms of, like, first impressions and, like, how much I was actually blown away with how cool it was, is Bulma. Yeah. Um, for me, uh... You know, I've been buying uh, some cheaper figures here and there, kind of getting into some different lines. And uh, for me, I have to say the best figure that I've bought this year that was less than $100 was probably, um, let me just double check the brand, but the, uh, I'm pretty sure it's the Nendoroid Kirby. The, oh, okay. uh, the one that, uh, I know they've released like the, uh, the blue version and like the red version, like just just the regular Kirby because um, that one comes with the different some different like the sword and the the link hat oh cool and uh, like the little uh, now that was released this year or you just got it this year uh so I think it might have been released at the end of last year but they did a second batch this year okay I've had it for about three months in the box and like we moved and I just didn't have time to mess with it uh -huh. um I got it I think when I got that Majin Vegeta that I sold you. 
which I think was, I kind of regret it because I think that's a cool figure. Um, but just the way that the figure works, like the hands and the feet are magnets and the different faces, because Kirby has a lot of different expressions, the, the hemispheres of the sphere rotate off and then you switch the faceplate and when you lock it in, that seam literally like disappears. Uh, the material that the figure is made out of is really interesting, and it has it comes with a figure flight stand, you know, because Kirby you know flies. Right. And for me personally, like Kirby is my favorite character to play in Smash. So having like all the different, not all the different, but a few of the different accessories from Smash and some of the different you know character designs. Right. Um, it's just really well made. You can have that thing because everything's a magnet. There's no. There's no articulation, so the arms can you can make him do a handstand. You can make the arms go where the feet are. You like he's jumping, you know, getting some leverage. Uh, that figure is just so well done. I, I thought to sell it maybe like a two weeks ago. I was telling you I was thinking about right. selling it, but you know, just sitting here talking about it, like, you know, I, I it's just such a neat figure. It's like my, you know, I've been playing Smash since I was a kid, and Kirby's always been my. My character, nice. um, and so to be able to have that on the shelf, like literally a flawless execution, kind of like your Bulma, uh, for me really means a lot. Um, for six scale, um, I've gotten a lot of new figures this year, like the Jack Sparrow, the Mark Six, Anakin, uh, several several new figures. It's been a pretty good year for me, um, but I, I really think that Anakin steals the show. And, and not only do weird. I think that Anakin steals the show for what I've gotten this year. From every other figure that I've seen this year from Hot Toys, I think the only figure that even remotely comes close is Yondu. But uh, Tashi Station uh, did a, uh, I think it was back in September or October, uh, a preemptive figure of the year uh, vote. And Shout Anakin, out Tashi. Yeah, Anakin won. Yeah. Uh, it was very close between Anakin and Yondu, but Anakin won. For me yeah. personally, it's a, it's a flawless figure. Um, yeah. I really don't think that there's... Uh, anything that they could have included in the in the regular release, with the exception of the force choke hand, I think that would have been a really nice because that's the only difference accessory wise than the base between the. Well, uh, another thing it has the uh, the dark side one has that the light side one doesn't the lightsaber that's moving. Yeah, but for me, like those aren't that great. Personally, I don't think that they're. That I've great. never used one, and I kind of want one. Oh really? Yeah, just when I get Obi Wan, because Obi Wan has one. Yeah. And I was gonna do like a cool like where they're fighting. Well, the good thing is a lot of uh, characters are gonna start getting those. So, you know, when Obi Wan gets his, you can find one parted off from Obi Wan, and I think the Ray from TLJ has one also. So that's two different figures plus the dark side Anakin that you could potentially find that part for, and they'll plug yeah. them straight in. I think Zach was saying he was gonna sell it, so I'm not hit him up on that. Oh, okay. So then like, I think I, but that's they they look like great, him. but for me like they're just not for me, you know. And uh, with that being said, I mean I guess we both agree Anakin is our figure of the year thus yeah, far. Yeah, so good. Um, but it's it's been a good year for figures. We've gotten a lot of good stuff, and uh, 2019 looks to be promising. Um, of course, at the end end of the year, I think we should we should revisit our choices because I think there's going to be a few things coming out between now and then. Yeah. I'm getting Palpatine, um, and and uh, you're going to get some some other things. Uh, but I really think that you know, Anakin's just such a strong figure uh, for that award. Um, with that being said, it's Thanksgiving weekend. Hopefully, everyone has a good Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you guys for listening to our episode. Hopefully, you got some enjoyment out of us talking toys. Uh, yeah. We'll catch you on the next episode. Bye.